Okay, so hello everyone. Um, welcome to the Horizon Weekly Insider number 14. Um, so again, happy Thursday, and please remember that uh, this call is going to be recorded and posted on our uh, podcast as well as in our YouTube channel. Um, also, please remember to ask your questions um, for us to have a, a good Q&A session at the end. So let's start with the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to, uh, please go ahead. Sure. Thank you, Angie. Hello again. Greetings from Milano. I'd like to start uh, by giving a short recap of um, what happened and what we achieved last Friday. It's uh, already almost one week ago, but I think it's worth it because it tells you much about uh, the level of responsiveness that we reached. Basically, a Bitcoin issue was revealed on Friday 8th of November, which translated in uh, an upstream issue also for us. Let me tell you already that uh, it was a very, very small one, very remote. But in any case, just like with any issue, it had to be fixed in the shortest possible amount of time. And uh, thanks to a great team effort that involved uh, multiple resources, including um, Alberto Garofalo, Alberto Sala, Maurizio Binello, Chronic, uh, and other people, we were able to prepare a Zendi hotfix release in a matter of hours. I think not more than two hours in total. And it was published on a Friday evening. Then with Chronic, uh, Rosario Pabst, Rowan Stone, we decided to warn all our partners about this potential vulnerability, even if it was a very small and remote one, as I said. And so we sent them an official communication with a link to upgrade to the hotfix release. We contacted a total of 78 partners and it was still Friday, so once again, just a few hours since the issue was disclosed, we were able to take all the appropriate actions to protect the whole Horizon ecosystem, including all our partners. This is, I think, really remarkable. And in fact, we got uh, the compliments from some of, of those partners. Speaking about the other activities on which we are currently involved, we have the sidechain project where we are making progress every single day with our road to beta. In particular, this week we have been working on withdrawal epochs, which are a big task. Uh, the next milestone, uh, it's represented by, by withdrawal epochs. And uh, a significant step uh, for our um, backward transfer logic. So the development there is going on very well. We are at the final stage of the development of the uh, epoch tasks I was mentioning last week. And the code review is scheduled for next week. Moreover, speaking about other uh, tasks related to the sidechain project, we are at the final stage with updating our sidechain test framework. The new feature coming with this update is that you will be able, in an automatic way, to bootstrap a sidechain into the existing mainchain network. This was not possible yet, but it's going to be possible uh, very soon. Uh, once we, are, we will have finished this. And moreover, we are increasing the coverage of main chain to side chain connection with this side chain test framework update. Towards also on the consensus side, we discussed a lot about this topic. We are currently doing some preliminary activities before starting with the implementation of the final consensus method we decided to adopt. But that's going to be the next big thing after right after epochs. And last but not at least by today, uh, we support uh, the new version of JDKs for running our sidechain SDK. We received this specific suggestion from a community member who put a comment on our public uh, sidechain repository on GitHub, and we thought it was making a lot of sense. So we decided to support the request. We would like to say thank you to the person who suggested this, Adrian Scott. And we would also like to take this chance to do a call to action to all the developers who are listening now. If you are a developer, please download our sidechain SDK and provide us with your feedbacks. Help us growing and bring your contribution to the Horizon sidechain SDK. That's it for now. Back to you, Angie. Thank you, Luca. Let's continue with the infrastructure department with Chronic. Yeah, hello everybody. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit into the detail of uh, the unplanned release we had to do last Friday. So uh, last Friday afternoon, we were made aware uh, of this vulnerability through our mutual vulnerability sharing agreement with Zcash. 
uh, a uh, public uh, disclosure has had just been made on the Bitcoin mailing list about this bug. And uh, this bug had been clandestinely fixed in Bitcoin upstream some months ago, um, but had just been made public on the mailing list. And uh, Zcash immediately started to port the fix to Bitcoin and uh, informed us about it. And um, this was done in a matter of hours. So two hours after the um, bug was uh, made public, Zcash had a had a fix in place. And after um, Zcash reviewed uh, and tested it, and we did some additional testing on it, we cherry picked this work. And although the the likelihood of this bug being exploited is very low, like Luca already said, um, so it, it can only be exploited if um, you are using a third-party proxy server to connect to the peer-to-peer -peer network, and this proxy server is malicious. We nonetheless decided to um, inform our uh, partners because um, although unlikely to exploit, the there is potential for remote code execution in this bug. Um, so there currently is no working proof of concept uh, out there, um, but still there would be potential for remote code execution. Um, so we, we decided to do a fix. We um, had it done three hours after Zcash had their um, hotfix tested. And then we started notifying all of our partners and none of the partners were actually affected by this. Um, none of them used this specific use case. But nonetheless, I would really like to thank Zcash for their quick notification, as well as having the fix available hours after the public disclosure. And I'd like to thank the whole team who participated in the unplanned release and uh, this pretty much was a textbook execution of an unplanned hotfix release. And I'm sorry for making everybody work on a Friday night. And that's it from Infra. Thank you, Kronik. Next one is Nalan, Alan on the note side. Yeah, hello. Uh, we're going to be starting up testing and uh, working on code reviews for the tracking server. And we'll be doing that with Chronic over the next few days, uh, maybe the next week, and hopefully get out an updated version um, as soon as we get all of that testing done. Back to you, Andy. Thank you, Alan. Next one would be Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the health desk update with uh, Spencer. Good morning, everyone. The status on the help desk uh, reads as such. We currently have 85 items open, 11 of which are waiting for support. We have 72 items waiting for response from a customer. We have uh, three items that are essentially uh, waiting that have been designated as unresponsive and they'll be closed out. And we have 17 items in pending. And uh, those are either waiting a software fix or some uh, other item. So that's the report from service desk. Okay, thanks, Spencer. This week we are finalizing the workshop. We've been working with Jonas and the HD project. We also have been focused on the sphere mobile testing, and uh, this upcoming week I'll also work assessing the root cause of the sphere performance issues on desktop. And that's everything for now. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Gustavo. Next one would be Rowan on the BD side. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so as Rob mentioned reasonably recently, we've been doing a little bit of outreach to a variety of funds and family offices with our partners at DCG and Grayscale. Uh, and one of the biggest kind of frictions we've been hearing throughout that process, obviously we're very lucky to have Grayscale with the Horizon Investment Trust uh, in the background, but one of the biggest frictions we see is the uh, lack of desire for large organizations to actually take custody of their own cryptocurrency. So one of the things we're trying to do at the moment in the business development division is create partnerships in basically every region around the world with trusted custodians to make sure that anybody that wants to jump into the ecosystem uh, and buy and, and hold Zen has a suitable custodian to do so. So Vano has been helping me a lot with that. He's not on this call at the moment. I believe he's currently on a plane back home from a conference in Malaga. But we've had uh, three pretty good conversations so far. Uh, one of which has been with a very, very large custodian, and there's two slightly newer custodians. They all seem to be leaning towards this new HSM technology, which is kind of the, 
the same type of hardware you'd use to store uh, nuclear launch codes and things like that. So quite cool to hear about uh, developments of that nature in the space. Uh, but all three that we've spoken to are very keen to work with us at Horizon, and all three are looking to get Zen integrated into their systems in one way, shape, or form. So that's really, really good news, and we'll be able to announce uh, who these organizations are in the coming weeks once the, the kind of details are, are bottomed out. The other big area of, of focus for us at the moment is the fiat on and off ramps uh, and also liquidity as a whole. We need to try and make sure that we have the easiest on and off ramps we can possibly get. And we really need to try and make sure that our liquidity is constantly improving to make it as easy as possible to come in and out of the ecosystem. So we've had a couple of pretty good success stories on both fronts there. Uh, nothing I can really mention in detail at the moment, unfortunately still secret squirrel, uh, but we will have a number of potential organizations to discuss in the coming calls. And that's pretty much it from me. Um, I will pass back to anybody else from BD if anybody else is on this call today. I'm just checking. I don't think they are, so we can move straight on. Thanks, Angie. Thank you, Rowan. Next one is Jonas in the HDA updates. Hey, everyone. Um, so my update for today, as Gustavo already said, they're almost done with uh, our deliverables for the MLH workshop. Pretty excited for that. As soon as we provide them with our deliverables, they will start to put together the workshop. Um, they will put together a little app that includes a very simple um, browser game. Um, we have, I think we're not entirely set yet, but something like Pong. And um, the workshop participants will be able to deposit um, Zen into an address. Each player might deposit one Zen, and then they play a game against each other. And um, the winner receives two Zen or the entire deposit. And just do that um, as a workshop to explain the UTXO concept to the students because they will have to implement the app themselves later on. So MLH will put the app together, then take certain key parts out of it again. And the, the task for the students will be to, uh, over the course of the workshop, plug those parts back in and um, get the whole system to work. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what, uh, what this will look like. Um, this also ties in really nicely with um, Mac doing a little presentation. I think it was the 28th of November at the Northumbria University. Uh, we get access to the students of the um, uh, Human Computer Interaction Department. And um, he will talk about what uh, brought him into the blockchain space and why it's an interesting space to work in. And we're looking to further cooperate with them um, regarding usability testing, user experience testing, um, all in cooperation with the students mostly. So also pretty excited about that. And I just sent around an internal presentation of the HDE and the processes that we have defined so far. Um, once feedback is collected, I'm more than happy to share um, this information with the rest of the community. I uh, just want to incorporate the first feedback round before I do so. And that would be it from my side. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Jonas. Next one would be Jonathan to give us the marketing update. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning. Uh, so. A couple of small updates here. We're trying to add uh, USD to the Horizon store so that people can buy uh, Horizon items using USD. And Mac has been really great in helping us set that up. Um, that should go live hopefully uh, within the next week. Uh, also, after having a really great conversation with Rolf, Rolf, thank you for spending time with me on that. I think we need to do a better job of highlighting some of the partners that we've already partnered with, which is dozens and dozens and dozens of partners that kind of have fallen off the table. So what I'd like to do, uh, working with Lucy and Erica, is start to create a weekly partner highlights on our social media. And uh, this would just help to re-engage with the partners we've, we've already have. In terms of marketing, it's always much easier to engage with partners you have than find new partners. And I don't think we've even begun to tap into 
the potential community growth we could achieve by working with our current partners. Um, also, we're working on our 2020 marketing plan. Uh, it's hard to believe, but it's almost the end of the year. And uh, we have a uh, first draft uh, ready, and we'll be presenting that internally uh, next week. And then uh, hopefully we can share some of that with the community as well. And lastly, we're going to be posting a blog today with the results of the community survey. So Eric is working on that and some really interesting results. Um, just very quickly, I'll go through kind of the top key points. Um, the people who took the survey, the majority of them are community members and node operators. And then after that are speculators and investors. So what people really like about the project, and again, this is a quick summary, please read the blog for more information. People really like our vision. They really like our transparency and they really like our focus on privacy. Um, in terms of improvement, a lot of the community, a lot of the survey respondents mentioned that they want to see more community growth, more people on Twitter, more people on Facebook, more engagement with the community and more of a simplified, uh, more of a simplified niche kind of messaging. In addition to that, people mentioned that they'd like to see they'd like to see easier to use nodes and easier to benefit from the awesome results we get from hosting nodes. In terms of competitors, again, you know, this shouldn't be surprising, but the biggest competitors as a community sees it are Monero, Zcash, Komodo, and Ethereum. Um, in terms of what's important to the community, personal data privacy is the most important thing. It, almost 80% of respondents uh, say that personal data privacy is their key concern. After that, we have shielded transactions, private communications, and private internet browsing. What I thought was really interesting is almost 70% of the respondents stated that side chains are really important to Horizon's future, which is great because the leadership team and the development team are really focused on uh, taking side chains and making them decentralized and secure. And basically that's the, the future of Horizon, our side chains. And then lastly, uh, we asked, how likely are you to recommend Horizon to a friend? And almost 55% of respondents gave a 10, meaning 55% would super duper recommend Horizon to a friend and almost 70, um, answered between eight and 10, meaning pretty much they would recommend Horizon to a friend. So I think that's really encouraging results. And we'll be having this community survey every uh, six months to 12 months. And uh, yeah, Rowan, super duper recommend. That's, that's definitely very good. Uh, and we'll be having this every six to 10 months, uh, six to 12 months. And that way we could see the changes and we could see how our progress is with the community. And that's it for me today. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Next one is Dean on the legal side. Cool. Hey, everyone. Um, <clears throat> nothing to update on the legal side. I'll just say, uh, Jonathan, uh, thank you for that update. Really enjoyed uh, looking at those results. And also, on a side note, I've uh, just recently joined the Twitter verse, and uh, I spent some time on Horizon um, Horizon site yesterday, or profile, or page. I don't even know what the right term is. And uh, amazing work. You guys do an amazing job. So congratulations on that. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Next one is Rosario with Product and Engineering. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, Erica just mentioned we hit our, our 40,000 followers on Twitter. So that's great news. And good job for doing that. So I'd like to welcome uh, a new Alberto to the team, uh, to the development team. Uh, so the, we're calling him Albene since we have three Alber Albertos. Uh, and it's just by coincidence, it's not planned that way. So congratulations, Alberto. Um, Alberto comes from us from the, uh, perhaps Alberto, uh, would you like to, Albene, would you like to give a, a brief uh, introduction to the, to the team? I'm not sure if you, this is your first time on Discord, so. Uh, sure. Uh, can you hear me, first of all? Yes, loud and clear. O okay. So, hello, everyone. Uh, I am yet another Alberto. Um, 
uh, what to say so i come from a very very different institution actually i come <clears throat> i used to work uh, till last week on uh, on uh, regulated uh, derivative exchange uh, here in europe uh, i'm super excited to uh, to have joined the the say horizon engineering team and to contribute to this project everyone i've met so far is just amazing and i'm sure we will have a great time together uh that's it for now i don't know if you have a specific question no uh, no uh, uh we're really happy to to have you and you'll be working with the other alberto on our our zendi core yes. uh, so that's uh, something that i i know that you've uh, been getting up to, up to speed on. So we're like really, really looking forward to your contributions and happy to have your experience, uh, for you to bring your experience to, to the table. So welcome to the team and very excited uh, that you are on board. Thank you. And uh, so as, as we released the uh, new white paper a uh, few weeks ago, we also need to update our roadmap to up to project uh, the, the, the slight modifications and the, the re refined deliverables over the next uh, year. So we'll be working on that uh, specifically on, and, and now that we have more resources, specifically on the direction of Zendi and, and where we're taking Zendi. Uh, and that'll be uh, very important as uh, right now, the majority of team has been focused on, on sidechain, SDK, and also uh, making the modifications on the main chain for the sidechain SDK. So uh, looking at that. And also, uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Chronic and Alan. We were on a previous call uh, regarding the, the tracker server, and I've uh, loved the way they are organizing all the, uh, the issues and the new features that are going to be projected for the, the tracker um, system. The node tracking system, and, and that's really a an, an attestment to how we're maturing as a project and as a team. Uh, so uh, I really like to model that for uh, our future projects, uh, and I know we we're using other systems to do that, but uh, I think doing it directly on GitHub in that way, when we make those repositories public, then uh, our community and other resource and other uh, individuals could follow the, the project to very specifics and, and see uh, what we're doing uh, behind the scenes. So that's really important. And also been working with the PM team to further refine all the activities. We're so busy as, as a team. Uh, we, we do need to parse out and prioritize and organize the work. So I've been spending more time and we'll be spending uh, a lot of time with with our PM team. So shout out to Angie, Ruben, and and Luca for uh, doing these things. So thank you very much. Oh, and uh, before I go, I just, uh, since Rob's not gonna join, um, just a quick update uh, from Singapore. I had a chance to catch up with uh, both Rob and Lucy, and it's been going fantastic. So they've uh, been able to have uh, very significant conversations with uh, teams and, and offices, as uh, Rowan mentioned, that are interested in, in Zen and Horizon as a project. So uh, that's, uh, uh, and of course, his, his speech, if you haven't seen it, I uh, recommend you uh, looking at that. And we could post the link here and in the notes of, of the podcast. And that's it for now. Thank you. Thanks, Rosario. And before we pass it on to the final part, I would like to remember you all for you to uh, ask your questions on Menti and uh, I'll leave it the final part to Ralph. Thanks, Angie. Uh, Threado mentioned in the um, uh, st stream here that he got a merchant to agree to accept Zen. And I think that's awesome. Uh, getting merchants bought into the idea of using Horizon and then getting them to agree it is, is a wonderful thing. There's a number of steps after that, just like starting something is, is uh, a big step in itself, continuing it along is an important step as well. And so while we were talking here, I typed up a uh, Horizon Merchant Adoption mini playbook, which we could expand. But basically the idea is uh, once we get a merchant to accept send, 
Great. Then we got to get customers to agree to go purchase on a regular basis with Zen. Um, and then after that, uh, we, the merchant will have some Zen in their possession. They got to figure out what to do with it. So we got to show them how to hold it. Um, and then they are going to want to use that Zen to buy other things. So we can continue to work to set up a mini ecosystem, talk to their suppliers, for example, or help the merchant to get an exchange account to convert it to their local currency, uh, and then continue working in that process. Furthermore, also good to look for merchants who have a strong reason to use, uh, use an alternative to the local currency. They might be more receptive uh, to doing that. And that could be in places where the local currency is inflationary or where there's uh, cross-border payments that are used. Sometimes merchants are, are near the, the border of a country and you know there's two different uh, types of money that's used or currency. Or places where cash is used uh, often because credit or debit card use is difficult or, or not wanted. Sometimes um, I see a lot of uh, cryptocurrency ATMs around and it's because there's people that operate cash businesses and they don't want to hold a lot of cash. They think it's uh, easier to convert their cash to uh, cryptocurrency uh, like Horizon and hold it there. Uh, or the Merchant might be uh, someone who doesn't have a banking relationship or they just want a low fee digital currency acceptance. So there's a lot of different types of merchants where um, they might be looking for the type of solution where they want to uh, accept Zen. And of course, it's also good for small and fast person to person transactions. Uh, and then adding privacy to it, that's a, a little bit more uh, work uh, with a full wallet, but that can be done later. So there's a lot of there's a lot of steps, and uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll publish this playbook here in the Discord, and then we can work to expand that uh, based on real world activity and lessons learned. So again, thanks for for doing that, and uh, let's let's keep working to get all sorts of merchants all over the world to accept that. Okay, we can now pass to the uh, Q&A session. Jonathan, if you would like to uh, continue. Sure, okay. Uh, so the first question is, what faucet feature are you most excited about? Uh, I'll take a stab at it, maybe Gustavo as well. So the faucet feature I'm personally most excited about are random bonus days. So I think it would be awesome if every couple of days there's a random bonus multiplier that all of our community can get if they come for you know that 12 or 24 hour period so to me that's super exciting and that i personally would would really enjoy using uh, what about you gustavo any upcoming faucet features you're excited about right now most of our work is still on the back end just making the system more robust i'll leave the the exciting features for you jonathan okay that sounds good so bonus days are definitely on the top of our list. Um, the next question is, are you planning any Christmas related contests? Uh, I don't know of any Christmas related contests that we're planning. I do know that we will have um, a holiday themed paper wallet like we did last year, which was really beautiful and our design team did an amazing job. Um, and also we will be holidizing the faucet and creating bonuses on certain days uh, during the holidays. So I think the faucet will be really pretty and definitely have increased payouts over the holidays. Um, also opening it up to the team, if anyone else knows of any Christmas related contests. Okay, sounds good. So the next question, the third question, uh, looks like is less of a question and more of a comment. Dean is so handsome. So Dean, maybe uh, if you have any comments or can give us tips how we can also become handsome. Wow, my mom must be on uh, this insider. Thank you, mom. I appreciate that. That's awesome. I love that. Uh, well, okay. Uh, in the interest of time, it's 12.01 and that's three questions. So thank you, everyone. Entry back to you. Thank you all for this uh, pretty good uh, weekly insider and hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Thank you, bro. Bye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Have a great week. Thanks, guys. Take care.